So this pretty much blew my mind when I did this. I used the free camera tool inside of Vantage and you can just look around, but you can also hold down the button and use walk keys to walk around and look around with the camera in any direction while you're standing in one place. So what you just saw is from Chaos Vantage. And if you don't know what Chaos Vantage is, it's a real-time rendering software that plugs right into 3ds Max and you can just export your V-Ray scene to Vantage and it's using the V-Ray GPU rendering technology, but it has a slick user interface attached to it and you can animate in there, you can move objects, you can apply new materials from Cosmos, you can add new models from Cosmos. You can basically set up your whole scene in there and it's showing you real-time rendering as you're doing it, giving you real-time feedback on things like depth of field and atmospherics and all your materials, all your lighting can be turned on and off, up and down, whatever you want. You can change everything and it's all happening in real-time, giving you real-time feedback of what your scene is looking like. It's a really awesome tool. I should mention that it can do a live link as well. So if you are moving things in 3ds Max or applying new materials or adding new lights, that can be instantly updated and shown in Chaos Vantage. So if you want to make a sweet rendering with a Vespa that has a sidecar in it, then stay tuned because I'll show you how it's done. Okay, so I want you to watch to the end and you'll see how I work through the different elements of Vantage and you'll see how simple and easy it is even to make simple animations in there. Everything is very intuitive and easy. It takes like five minutes to figure out the user interface and then you're just off and going and you have like full creative freedom. It's pretty awesome. So watch the process as I'm going through that. It'll give you some tips on how to get started on your own. And at the end, you'll see what my animation ends up looking like. But also I have questions for you guys. First things first, you gotta get the program. And it's actually kind of important that you get it now because right now Chaos Group is offering it for free for a one year license, but it's not always gonna be that way. I think it's until June of this year that you can get it for free with your V-Ray. So let's get into it and take a look. So the first thing I try out is the live link and that's just, when you load Vantage, it comes up with a toolbar, you click on it and say establish live link. It opens Vantage automatically and voila, you're linked. Okay, so here you can see the side-by-side -side with 3D Studio Max slash V-Ray, and I'm moving the chair around and it is live linking. So it's like having the V-Ray GPU renderer going, the interactive renderer going, but it's inside of its own interface in Vantage. Pretty slick. There's the toolbar right there. And I'm gonna switch from the live link to exporting a V-Ray scene. And honestly, I find this more useful. I now have the freedom to move things, apply new materials in here, set up new cameras, all that kind of stuff. Uh, some of the tools are limited when you are doing a live link because obviously some of the things are supposed to be done in Max. But here, I like having the freedom to just do it all in here. It's, it's clean and it's easy. So I'm testing out moving some lights, moving objects, applying an LUT in here. So it's like a V-Ray frame buffer too. It's got kind of the light mix effect going on. It's got LUTs, it's got exposure. All the post-processing stuff can also be done inside here, which is very nice. I'm tinting the fog right now. So the fog is fully supported in here. I can turn it on and off. This is V-Ray environment fog that is applied in Max, but as it's exported as a V-Ray scene, it comes into here with the fog. I can turn it on and off. I can change the colors of it. I can change the intensity of the lights, the colors of the lights, basically everything. You can bring up the materials that are in your scene. So these are all the materials in my scene. And I can apply new ones to the chair. I can apply the carpet to the wall if I want. I can apply the wood to the whole chair. And you can open up Cosmos in here. And you can find models. You can find your materials. So you'll see I brought in that Vespa, my favorite little Vespa and I imported it from Cosmos just like you would in 3ds Max. And you can just move it into place. So I'm gonna move that chair out of the way. 
and put my Vespa in there. And I have to scale it down unrealistically because it's too big for my space. And I'm just worried about composition here. So I scaled it down to a miniature Vespa. Applying some concrete, concrete straight from Cosmos, applying it to the wall. Now this is the free look mode inside of Vantage and it's super cool. You can just look around inside of your rendered scene. So this pretty much blew my mind when I did this. I used the free camera tool inside of Vantage and you can just look around, but you can also hold down the button and use walk keys to walk around and look around with the camera in any direction while you're standing in one place. The navigation is actually great, so you can navigate however you want and then set up a camera to match where you're standing and looking. Okay, you can set up your aspect ratio, you can set up your resolution. Now I'm gonna start trying to animate some things. And really, I'm just transitioning between cameras. So in the animation slider at the bottom, you just drag cameras that you've set up into there, and then you create a transition between them. And I set this transition to be five seconds. So it just goes from one camera to the next, and it does it in five seconds. So your cameras are essentially your keyframes. You can also animate objects in here, by the way. I'm just animating cameras. And of course you can animate the depth of field and everything like that. Depth of field is done intuitively using a focus button up at the top. You just say, you just choose the tool and then you click on what you want to focus on. Then you can update your camera with that new focus. You can set the cameras to be really whatever you want and it will just transition between that and whatever camera, other camera you choose. So see, there's the depth of field working. Right, focus on those scissors in the foreground versus the Vespa in the background. Again, you can easily animate from focused on the scissors to focusing on the Vespa, just like that, and it will transition between them. So here you can see more animation going on. It's just transitioning between different camera settings or locations. You can see it takes a little time to refine each time you set a camera, so it's not perfect right away. It starts off blurry and then refines itself, gets rid of the noise, that kind of thing much like the interactive renderer inside of 3ds max i mean it's using the exact same software essentially okay but it can refine itself quite nicely and get a very good looking rendering and then it's just a matter of saying okay spit out a high-res screenshot of this or an animation of of what i'm setting up down here in the timeline once you do that it is not instantly done it takes its time to refine each frame as much as you've told it to. So if it's a still frame, it's gonna take like 10 seconds. If it's an animation, it could take 10 seconds per frame, depending on how you set it up. Either way, it's uh, much better than 10 minutes per frame, which is what I'm used to with some of my CPU renderings. Pretty high. We're talking about the difference between days or weeks versus an hour. Okay, so still just setting up an animation here. And you can see how easy it is to navigate around, set up any camera you want, and you could you could customize each one of these cameras for a different thing if you wanted. And you could just say, I want these 10 stills. Boom, spit them out. You can actually set up a queue and render all of them at the same time, or send them to queue up all at the same time, and it'll just generate those for you in a matter of maybe a minute. Okay, so here it is exporting. It's pretty much it, exporting your animation with your still frame or animation settings. So I have questions for you guys. So I wanna know how this will work into your workflow, how this compares to something like UE5. For me, the biggest thing is that Vantage is not a game engine, so it isn't worried about frame rates in the same way that Unreal Engine would be because we don't need to navigate and interact with it so much. It's more about visuals, right? So it's like it's like the cinematic part of UE5. So the ray tracing in there is real time ray tracing, right? But it isn't like UE5 where it has to be at 90 frames a second. So it's a little bit different thing than a game engine, right? So I wanna know what you guys think about this and you can let me know in the comments, but I feel like this is a good solution for people that are ArcViz artists 
because it feels it feels familiar to us because we are oftentimes V-Ray users or Corona users, so this stuff all kind of makes sense to us. But also, it we are, we aren't making video games, so this feels like it could be the right kind of solution, the right balance for us. Real time, but not a video game. Solely focused on the visuals. So I want to know what you guys feel about that. How does this compare to something like UE5? How likely are you to integrate this into your into your workflow versus using something like UE5 where you have full interaction, you can do a full VR walkthrough, you can put a headset in and walk through your scene. I think both are extremely cool, but I want to know from you guys which one is more likely to work its way into your workflow. I've got to say that in the short term, something like Vantage is probably more likely to be a useful tool for me in my daily workflow. But in the long term, I don't know. I want to hear from you guys. So thanks for being here. Thanks for watching. I'm trying to make a lot more content about these kinds of things and all things ArcViz related. So make sure to subscribe. Check out my latest videos about UE5 as well. Subscribe here for upcoming content for ArcViz stuff with hopefully my explorations of some of the latest software advancements that are out there. And uh, I'm just going to keep experimenting, keep pushing the limit of what we can do in ArcViz, keep demonstrating for you guys, keep teaching. As always, you can check out my courses if you're interested in that. But most of all, subscribe and I want to hear from you guys your feedback on the stuff you see in this video regarding Chaos Advantage. So before I let you go, as promised, here is the animation, which I think out, came out pretty cool, except for the highlights being kind of jittery, the ultra bright highlights. So maybe someone in the comments will know how I can fix that sort of thing. But there it is. There's the animation results as promised. Hope you enjoyed the video about Chaos Vantage. Again, let me know in the comments what you think of all this. Talk to you soon.